I've managed to rip my pants even more than what they were. We've opened a can of worms, a new can of worms with the disaster Datsun, which really puts the disaster into the Datsun. Hey guys, welcome back to your Couch Vision. In this video, we're gonna continue working on the Datsun 260Z. I may have seen the last couple of videos where we've got this engine, this front axle, the gearbox out, and that rear axle. Well, in this video, we're gonna tackle this front nose cone section, get all the structural pieces complete. So, let's grab some tools and let's crack on. Right, so the main focus for this video is gonna be this front section. So you've got the two components, you've got this lower section and this top section here. Now, this lower section, we've actually refabricated before we um, started the channel. Um, so we did this about two years ago. Um, this basically, we used most of the original and we put a new plate on this back side, welded it on, and then just protected it. So this basically goes on there, just like that. So the next section is this one here. So this is your radiator support. And this basically goes from one side to the other. You can see the old one here um, that's still remaining. Um, so we've got that new panel there. The only thing we don't have for that new panel is these little triangle support pieces. These go on here like that. So we've got one that we've taken from the original when we rebuilt this section here. And then we've also got this one here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unpick this. I can sort of like cut, cut most of this out, but I need to save this top triangle piece um, here to obviously put on the new piece as well. So I'm gonna make my reference lines. I'm gonna take this off um, and then I can start refabbing the new piece to then put back on. Right, one thing we do need to bear in mind as well is the dimension between the two chassis rails. Now, because all of this supporting elements between one chassis rail and the other chassis rail have been taken off, um, and because a lot of this chassis rail is actually perished, and we've fixed the other chassis rail, um, the chassis legs may have wavered slightly. Um, now, doing a quick dimension, there is actually a 12 mil difference between the chassis rails on the back side and this front side here, which means the chassis, which means the chassis rails have opened up slightly. Now, if I do a dimension here, 632 mil, 644 mil. Um, so there is movement in this chassis rail in particular uh, because this one's all repaired now. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take this engine brace and pop this engine brace back on um, just to get that dimension correct.
offering this up, I noticed that there's a gap between this side and this section. And when this section, when this old section was still on here, there was also a gap in there as well. Um, I wasn't sure if it was actually this section that was out um, because I've repaired this section before. Now, this section is out by approximately uh, 10 mil. If you look down, if you look down here or put a straight edge down here, you can actually see that this needs to come in by 10 mil, which is um, not too bad because you'll, you've got a bit of flex in that anyway, so we can actually get that over. That's not, not really a problem. This is out by a whole lot more than 10 mil. Um, it's actually out by about 30 mil. The dimension between this end point here and this back section over here is different to this and this by about 25 mil. You may have seen me slapping this with a hammer and that's because this was actually creased, it had a bit of a crease in it. Now looking at it further, it actually bows back in on itself like that. Um, what we think is this car has actually been in an accident in this previous time, which has pushed this whole corner in towards itself. We've opened a can of worms, a new can of worms with the disaster Datsun, which really puts the disaster into the Datsun. We've got this, which is the bonnet opener, and, and this also has side to side movement. This section does actually need to come in slightly. Um, I put a straight edge down here, um, and this does need to come in slightly, but this still doesn't alleviate that gap that we've got. This here needs to come this way and this way. Ow. Ah. So I'm gonna take this off, I'm then gonna uh, take the tacks off of this on this top section and pull it forward and slightly in um, and that should fix that issue. I'll then do all the measurements again, make sure everything ties in. I'll, I can then put this on and make sure this dimension between here and here is correct. Um, I can put this on and make sure that this dimension is uh, also correct. Um, and then the uh, bonnet stay which connects into here and here, I can put that on and make sure that dimension is actually correct. Right, so it's actually the same dimension on both sides now from the bulkhead. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the bonnet, make sure that fits on correctly, make sure we've got the same dimension there. And I'm also going to do all the cross dimensions as well um, to make sure that they're all correct. Right, so we've got the bonnet on. We've also put the cowl on as well, and the reason for that is because it helps me position this bonnet. Now, I've got a good gap between the cowl and the back of the bonnet, which means that this bonnet should be in near enough the right spot. Now, what I'm looking for in this front section is I'm looking for this body line on the bonnet meeting up with this on the lights around. Now, the same for the other side. It does line up pretty well, to be honest, but you do have some, you do have some movement on these lights rounds uh, forward and backwards because these holes are actually elongated. Now, what doesn't line up correctly is this body line here. Now, between the side of the bonnet and the side of the lights around doesn't quite line up. But, as I, as I mentioned before, what we can do is we can actually push this uh, section in to actually meet the bonnet uh, correctly.
Right, so I do want to mention that this was all taken off before we actually got the car, so it didn't have any of these structural pieces going across the front. Um, now, we do think, like I was saying, that there has been an accident on this side, which has pushed it in. Um, if you are taking these off for yourself, you do want to check the measurements. You want to brace the car some other way um, to try and keep that structural rigidity um, and to make sure it doesn't sort of like do anything funky, basically. So now we've got this in place, what I'm going to do now is you've just seen me tap this into shape because I wanted that nice rounded shape just like this side. Um, so I can weld a lot of this up, but I will need to make new pieces in here.
Right, so I definitely didn't lose to that bolt that's still not there. That's not still there. It's definitely not still there. I just wanted to take this off instead um, because, you know, I just wanted to leave this on just, you know, just for the heck of it, really. I've also managed to dig, um, dig a nice hole in the concrete and I've managed to rip my pants even more than what they were because of this bolt that I can't get out. I can't get the bolt out. Oh, what's that noise, do you ask? That's um, the roof leaking. Again. Right, so the engine cradle is now in. Um, it's nice and tight. So you've just watched me refabricate this piece here. Now what we need to do is we need to get this core support in. So there's the two triangle pieces that we need to weld on, um, and then obviously we can put this in here. Um, there is a little bit here that I haven't actually welded up yet. The reason for that is because we need to get this chassis rail uh, repaired on the bottom and this inside as well. Um, obviously you can, you can kind of see here that it's, it's pretty rotten to be honest. There's an old repair here that we do need to address, probably take that out and put a new repair in there. Um, but apart from that, um, this is complete. So like I say, we will be slightly bending this out of the way to get to that inside um, to repair that chassis rail, but that will be in another video. So what we'll do now is we'll get the core support, we'll get the two little triangle pieces on, we'll test fit it and then see how it fits. Right, so I've just tacked these on for now, just in case I do need to move them. So I want to make sure that this is 100% in the correct location before I fully weld these on. I do need to drill some holes in that one, um, just like the holes in this one, um, so I can get a good pull of weld in there. Now, I know exactly where this goes because I've got my reference points, which are these two screws on either side. Now, I took my dimensions earlier for this uh, little triangle gusset and Right, so I've got my dimensions. I can check these dimensions 
to this, just like I did before I took it off, so I can make sure that this is in the correct place. I can do the same over there, because that one wasn't attached to when we got the car, so I can just reflect these dimensions over to that side, making sure that it's correct to the bulkhead as well. Well, that's going to be it for this video guys, thanks for watching. As you can see we've got this core support, these gussets and this front support section all tacked in. Nice and steady. Make sure you guys see my next that's some video where we're going to get this finally welded in and continue with this engine bay. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button, leave a comment down below and with that being said, we will catch you in the next one.